And every Monday now at 10.30 New York time, all radio dials are starting to turn to Sweeney and March. And, Tip, I might add to your introduction, too, the boys have been on the Chesterfield Supper Club, the Hobie Carmichael Show, their constant guests on the Ginny Sims Show, and now they have their own show on CBS. And, Bob Sweeney, I'm certainly glad to see you. Well, it's nice to be here, too, Mr. Parker. And tell me this, Bob. How did you happen to start in radio? Well, uh, I started in radio the way uh, most fellows get into radio, you know, like the big announcers, Don Wilson and all those fellows. Uh, I had an aunt who heard my voice on the telephone and thought I should be on the air. <laughs> Uh, where was this? Uh, this was in, in, in San Francisco. Oh. Uh, that... I was born there. My mother and father were there. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Did you go to school up there, Bob? Yeah, I went to the University of San Francisco, and I went to uh, uh, the San Francisco Junior College. Oh. oh. How'd you get started in radio? How'd you get started? Uh, well, I, as I say, my, my aunt liked my voice, and I went down and, and told the fellows, you know, at the radio station that I liked to be on, and uh, they said that there wasn't any room. Oh. Uh, they just didn't want me. No? Yeah. And this went on for years. Oh, no. Yeah. And then after then after I got out of school, I tried radio some more, uh -huh. and I became a cab driver for the Yellow Cab Company. <laughs> well, this is sort of a roundabout way, but after the cab company, then you got on the radio. Well, not exactly. I became a clerk at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. <laughs> so uh, After the Palace Hotel, you immediately went on the radio. Well, uh, in a way, I won an amateur contest up there. What amateur contest? Well, it was called the Mirandell Amateur Hour, and I won some cottage cheese and stuff. And... <laughs> And that started you with the cheese on the radio? Yeah, well, I took it home, and we could only eat so much, you know. And, and then uh, uh, then after that, uh, we, well, we just did, you know, the usual things. I, I, I recited the, uh, about the Bay Bridge when I won. The what? About the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. You recited about that? Yeah, that's how I won the contest. That's how you won the cheese? Yeah, I won yeah. the cheese. Uh, we, how? Let me, give me an idea how it goes. Well, it, it starts out with, uh, you're talking about the Pacific Ocean that runs under the bridge, and it says something about the blue Pacific is so beautiful, the bridge is stretched across. No, and no, every no, time no, Bob, every... no, no, that's not for this show. What's how I won the contest, Tom? That's a much bigger show. You're fat, that's not, not for here. Oh, well, I'm... Can I cut in, Thomas? Certainly. Uh, uh, who are you? I'm Hal March. I'm this little fellow's partner. Oh, I yeah. see. I'm sorry. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Uh, a native San Franciscan, too? Yes, as a matter of fact, yeah, I was born in San Francisco, too, same as Bob. And, uh, did different you... Different parents, though. Different parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Strange. Uh, did you get into radio the same as he did, through the cheese route? No, no, I had a... Oh, I had a far more colorful background. Bob didn't have the right amount of talent. You see, I was really ready. I, I'd been trained in, in a delicatessen business in San Francisco. <laughs> I had a lot of training, manicuring salamis and stuff, so I knew, I knew that I was really ready for radio, so I went to the station KYA in San Francisco, applied immediately, they recognized my capabilities, and they, they put me to work there. I wanted to be an announcer, and they, they hired me. Uh, I did all kinds of things at KYA. You were, you were Bob's partner? Well, no, not exactly. Bob was, was chief announcer at the place. Yeah, I was the chief please, announcer Bob, at the radio. Bob, please, uh, please. please. I was a chief announcer. Please. He thinks he's the boss of the team all the time. But he isn't, is he? No, not actually. You can, see, you can see I'm a strong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Kevin, back to this. You're Bob's partner in the radio, is that yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Now, and, and it happened uh, that Bob was doing a show in San Francisco called Sweeney's Neighbors. It was a single. He wanted to hog everything, you know. He wouldn't let anybody else on. Sweeney's Neighbors, a big name. So I used to hang around the studio while he was... No, that's true, honestly. Don't, don't look at him. He's got an honest face, but he's conceiving. Uh, and I used to hang around watching Bob do this show, and every once in a while I'd, I'd come up with a good suggestion to make it funnier. And, uh, uh, of course, that would necessitate my getting into it. Well, that went on for a while, and finally, after a few weeks, the name of the program was changed to Sweeney's Neighbor March. Well, how did, the team, way right in there. how did the team of Sweeney and March originate? Well, I came down to Hollywood right after that, Jay, and uh, I figured... And you went right on the radio? Well, no, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I came down here figuring I was really ready after all six months of San Francisco. You're ready for the big time. <laughs> Great city up there. And uh, I came down to get into acting. Well, I asked a few people if, they, if they'd like to use me, and a lot of them said they would, but they... Uh, it wasn't for acting. At any rate, uh, <laughs> I... Uh, but you eventually got on the radio. You went right on the radio then? Well, I, I got... Well, I, I got well, 
Oh! On, uh, selling them on the radio. No, off a truck, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, it was the break I needed. It was really the break I needed because immediately after that, there was a, there was a crying need in Hollywood radio for men with that noodle background. And, and I, <laughs> I, I thought it was so you picked up Mr. Sweeney. That's right. Bob came down right after that, and, and uh, by this time I had a closet full of noodles. There was enough for both of us to eat, and he didn't have to take any other job. There was enough there. And we started this show, and I figured Bob was a good kid, so he might as well come along. Well, look, I'm a constant listener, and I know so many of our listeners are too, and I don't know just how to describe your type comedy. What would you call it? What do you say, Swain? Well, Bob, I, please. I, I'd say please, that. Please, Bob. It's, uh... Well, I was about to say... Th- well, go ahead. Say it. Oh. Experience will be good. Oh, thank you. Uh, the, the, the type of comedy we do is, is uh, satires on life, mostly. Wouldn't you say that was it, Al? Yeah, all really, really close to human things. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we a very typical satire is, is, a, is a daytime radio serial. You know, the thing you hear all the time, on the, they're happy things. People are... Misery for 25, 30 years. It's an awful, it's really an awful thing. And, and we'd like to, we'd like to, to now do one of these things where the announcer comes on usually and he says, Aunt Martha's Bottled Donuts present the story of young Dr. Sweeney. Tonight, we hear chapter 87 of book 14 from volume 83, <laughs> entitled The Story of Young Dr. Sweeney or Through the Elementary Canoe with Native Canoe and Scalpel <laughs> or Dr. Sweeney Cuts for Deal. Now, if you recall, when we left young Dr. Sweeney yesterday, he and Nurse Burke were having a few mayonnaise sandwiches and a glass of beer in surgery when we heard that familiar cry. Calling Dr. Sweeney. Calling Dr. Sweeney. You should hear what they're calling Dr. Sweeney. (laughs) At this instant, action took command of General Hospital. Surgery was made ready. Instruments sterilized. The patient was wheeled in. A hush came over the room. And from behind his mask, the operating surgeon spoke. Does anyone have a (laughs) Band-Aid? Beads of perspiration stood out in young Dr. Sweeney's head. A voice rang out from the gallery. I have a lady in the balcony, Doctor. (laughs) We'll return to the story of young Dr. Sweeney in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsors, the makers of Aunt Martha's Bottled Donuts. Thank you. Friend, why not try a five-gallon jar of Aunt Martha's Bottled Donuts tomorrow? No fuss, no bother of coffee making, no slopping and dribbling, because Aunt Martha's Donuts come to you already ducked in cold coffee. (laughs) <laughs> Six dozen chubby little donuts in each bottle. Delicious, nutritious, and so soggy. <laughs> Drop in at your grocer's tomorrow, walk up to the counter, and just say, Good! <laughs> You'll know what you mean. Why, why, only yesterday we received an encouraging letter from Mrs. J.C. Flippin, housewife of Eagle Rock, California, who said... Those donuts are about the... Thank you. Thank you, (laughs) Mrs. And now, back to the story of young Dr. Sweeney. Doctor? Yes, Doctor? Are you ready? Ready. Is the patient ready? Not quite. Mm. Take this pencil and we'll mark the area to be cut. Right. Place an X there. Got it. Another X there. Have it. Put a circle here. Check. Another circle here. Right. Put an X there. I'll put a circle there. Oh, you always win. (laughs) I'm, uh... I'm ready to start the operation, Doctor. Very well, Doctor. Scalpel. Scalpel. Forceps. Forceps. Sulfonilamide. Sulf... How's that? Sulfonilamide. Well, how do you spell it? (laughs) S-U-L... F... (laughs) Another scalpel. Another scalpel. (laughs) Cotton. Cotton. Suture. Suture. Eraser. What happened? Made a mistake. Put it back. Doctor, how's the anesthetic? <sighs> Delicious. Have a glass? <laughs> Thank you. Don't mind if I do. You know, Doctor, maybe you could give me a little advice. Yes? I have a very bad case of insomnia. Bad case of insomnia? Uh-huh. How many bottles in the case? Twelve. Sell it to me. I drink it. All right. <laughs> I don't mean to change the subject, Doctor, but weren't we doing something a minute ago? Yes, yes. An operation. Say, Doctor. Yeah? I'd like to ask you one little question. Now, go ahead. Do you think a man could live without his gallbladder? Definitely not. Do you think a man could live without his liver? Out of the question. Very well. Take off your gloves. I guess we killed him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Dr. March. I beg your pardon? I said, uh, Dr. March? Yes, Dr. Sweeney? Have you got those two nurses out in the ambulance? Yes. Shall we go? Let's. Fine. Thank you. 